Uh, well, today I am uh, specifically not giving a research talk, which is quite ironic in uh, International Conference on Fundamentals of Physics, but I thought it would be interesting to talk about what physics has a function in society as a theory of knowledge. So today I'll be talking about the new scientific outlook and why, what leads to the pseudo-scientific catastrophe and what kind of role does, uh, it, what kind of intellectual function does scientists and science in general play uh, in society. So first we need to identify who are these intellectuals that we are talking about. So there is uh, this uh, Italian Marxist, Antonio Gramsci, talks about these intellectuals. He said they are traditional intellectuals, such as teachers, priests, students, the people uh, in the community sitting here, are these, these are the people who are uh, traditional intellectuals. And the other intellectual that he talks about uh, is the organic intellectual, who's, who's engaged with the enterprise, who stays in society and who talks about uh, its societal norms. And he, the, this organic intellectual is basically used as a minion to uh, organize interest in the, uh, the fabric and the hegemony of society and to gain more power by populists. Julian Bender, which exactly defines the kind of community we live in, uh, he says that uh, there's a philosopher, mighty king, who's an intellectual, he says, my kingdom is not of this world. And perhaps that kind of uh, higher pedestal science has led to, where it has, uh, in, in one form, detached itself from society, and it works parallelly to it, but not into it. Then there's another uh, Palestinian born American thinker, he says, uh, uh, his intellectual is, is perhaps an outsider, he's an amateur who disturbs the status quo. Uh, so this person, which is very interesting when Saad says, uh, it not only defines humanists, it also defines scientists, he says, this intellectual is unashamed and uncompromising secularist who speaks truth to power and to whom no worldly power is too big to be criticized. These things stand true. But are these things in public narrative that we do need to question? So science, of course, uh, definition uh, sounds very familiar to the scientific community. But again, uh, I am particularly forced to uh, understand, isn't that the primary fact when you're looking at scientific interest or scientific outlook? And, and Einstein very famously says that intellectuals have a microscope before their eyes or a blindfold, which I added later on. So science uh, also has a political function. So Pascal Lori and Francois Serenielli, uh, they argue that uh, this intellectual that we're talking about is not only defined by the function that it plays in society or the status, but also uh, by his interventions in public sphere. They also, they, they also stand for the class of intellectuals, which I'm mentioning of late. So this, uh, Comes, this class comes from the underutilized human potential which is spread across the globe. And these are the people, again, uh, quoting Sion, are not uh, uh, afraid of asking uncomfortable questions. As I said uh, in uh, my opening address yesterday, that we do need to challenge paradigms. And uh, we'll, come, we'll be coming to Kajal uh, later on. He wrote this book called Advice to the Young Investigator, and he says that if you respect a theory too much, you cannot challenge it because it weakens your spine. So uh, Camus, this French existentialist, he says, uh, intellectualism is an act of revenge, a measure of overcoming fate by imposing a form on it. So this kind of uh, re uh, rebellion, it doesn't uh, require demonstration. You don't even have to go out in public. But the science as a function needs to sustain a dialogue in public sphere, which is basically the condition which uh, enhances scientific temper, which is mandated by Constitution of India. And then we also talk about this part of science where Einstein famously said, that scientists were the first people who made sure that democracy becomes truly possible. And, and because they were the people who, who broke uh, boundaries of what a class should have and what a class should not have, and everything as you see today is available for everybody. So that kind of equality was only possible in science but not in public sphere. 
And these are the people who awaken nations, as he says, from their sluggish dullness. So that kind of uh, the political intervention science has, but unfortunately, as we grow into our own specific regimes and narrow utopias, this kind of dialogue cannot sustain it, dies eventually. So one important thing that uh, it's, I'm not talking about scientific method, I'm talking about method of science, where is science virtuous? Is it an end in itself argument? Are we doing science just for the sake of doing science? Are we all, are we looking at a teleological end? Are we arriving at something? Or are we discovering? So there are two different things that we are interested in this argument, where science is leading somewhere, or science is arriving somewhere. So I leave this question open, you can think about it, and perhaps we can discuss this during the coffee break. Uh, now let's go to this obtuse thought. Uh, and Heisenberg, unfortunately, is often quoted for, uh, by the pseudo-scientific propaganda people, where he uh, talked about in his book, Physics and Philosophy, about amalgamating the new method and the old method. And he says it won't be, uh, uh, you know, uh, it won't be a bad idea to use science and talk about uh, old cultures and philosophical consequences of it and compare them with the older traditions. This is exactly what catastrophe is. This guy is misquoted. He was talking about scientific method, about modern physics and old physics. He was not primarily talking about methods of thinking, about political narrative. And because that happened, Heisenberg gets misquoted everywhere. So, so now I, I come to this very interesting thought that every idea needs execution. And it executes itself by its agent of execution. Idea has no power of executing itself. An agent has the power to ascertain the outcome. So the, when idea is executing itself in an agent, it only influences the outcome very passively. And if that's the case, and we put science as an idea, and society as an outcome. So is science acting as an executionary force or as an acting force? If it's an executionary vote that has no say in public sphere, which we do, which we do see uh, right now, and it's great that uh, yesterday uh, and day before yesterday we were talking about Chandrayaan two of and on. It's great that we got that kind of narrative right. But people who were sitting and discussing all of these things were not scientists, primarily, and they were humanists. They were polit political thinkers talking about what kind of technological advancement will happen. What are the science rules? These. And then uh, we don't have a strong force coming out of the community which says this is right and that's wrong. And the reason is that science is not acting as an agent of execution of the idea, but only the execution itself, of the executor itself. It's like I write a policy and the bureaucrat uh, executes it. The power of execution goes to the bureaucrat and I have no uh, power over the outcome. You can go to some place, you will see totally different outcomes when you see the policy document and the execution report. We uh, as scientists only live to discover beauty as Khalid Gibran said. And everything else is a form of painting, of course. We are looking for symmetries, we are looking for beautiful equations. But then, who is going to do the dirty job? And that question is still open. So what is, uh, how science and science role uh, be defined in society? We don't know, because that kind of narrative is absent. Is science living in a delusion of absurdity and eventuality of its own idea? If I say the science is worse when it's the end in itself argument, are we primarily looking at something where it creates a utopia and lives in it? And famously Wittgenstein says in Tractatus Logical Philosophy, he said it's impossible to say anything about the world as whole. And whatever can be uh, said has to be about the bounded portion of the world. But he also says that world is an idea. And if that is the case, again, when we come at idea, execution, agent argument, it just goes in a very different direction. This very uh, interesting political argument happened between Kurtzworth and Hobbes 
about moral legitimacy of the idea. We are talking about ideas, we are talking about great thinkers, we are talking about path-breaking paradigms and everything. But are we questioning its moral legitimacy? That's another question which is still open. Now again, so this is something which is of certain use, especially in the country files. So are we trying to define faith as logical? We cannot, but are we doing that? If that is the case, then we are a scientific community questioning it. Now because we've narrowed down our own regimes and we are busy in our laboratories, people uh, who have no background in logic are talking about logic. And again, uh, there's another very interesting argument which was led from Wittgenstein. It says, when we believe in theories, what exactly do we mean? And Kajal says, again, as I said earlier, that uh, if you believe, of, so if you respect some theory too much, you cannot challenge it. And people who are firm believers cannot challenge the idea of God. So is science work, it does science work on belief? That's another open question which still remains unanswered. And uh, this, I mean, one thing which we should also understand that we are having a colonial hangover, especially in the developing part of the world. We derive something and but we don't challenge it. There, there must be a great work which is going on right here, right now, but we don't know it. A very senior physicist said, uh, a couple of years ago that some great work, uh, some Nobel Prize winning work is going on but I don't want it from Bangladesh. And that was disheartening because this person has a great reputation. And if that comes in that kind of an institute and with these kind of people, it becomes a very different kind of narrative on how science is looked and how science intertwines itself with classes and race. So uh, now I talk about uh, the formidable betrayal by science. Have we given the world to humanists? Like totally. Are only political thinkers are responsible for the world? Again, uh, the other question, because it's uh, the right-wing populism which is rising everywhere in the world, are these strong men so tough to stop science and scientific arguments? Do we require a political narrative as scientists? Yes, we do, but where is that? See, one, uh, one thing which uh, you cannot uh, overlook is there's an intolerance which is rising. It's not only uh, about human rights, it is about science. There are people standing against science. You see flat earth society. Classic example. People don't believe that earth is uh, a sphere. They just don't. They say it's a flat, it's a flat system. And they're up and they, f be uh, they believe it really with real uh, reasons and they have their own logic and again can logic be subjective can logic be objective we still have that idea open because there there is no strong narrative which is coming in public sphere and then that narrative is not sustained we come out from a laboratory talk for five minutes on camera and go back that doesn't work and we also seeing there's a clear overlay of propaganda under which the reality of society is lying and again, I ask that question again. If you're only looking for beauty, who's going to do the dirty job? So these, uh, these strongman propaganda, they're primarily trying to, uh, you know, bring the problems which require immediate attention and which overshadows everything in the past. And what, what we uh, as scientists unfortunately do not the entire community, but there are very respected people who go out in public sphere and try to put some logic in mass hysteria. And when that happens, they end up supporting the populists. And when they are giving an argument, they're also giving an argument where there is no logical end, but they give them a reason. So this question again comes to my mind where is science living in utopia? Have we create our own sphere where we don't want to come out? But if we don't want to come out, if we are influencing in society, I mean, science cannot exist without society. If there are no consumers, 
what will science do as an idea itself nature was existing it was for man to understand nature and then eventually to apply it but if that is not the case as we believe right now then whatever we do doesn't make sense not much sense rather and again is uh, when you were talking about utopia and as einstein famously said it is it a persistently stubborn illusion and if we are being delusional then and on on effect on a, on a magnitude scale where do we stand much farther i think so there is certainly a science as an intellectual function in society and we do need to understand that we are standing on crossroads where you cannot avoid truth at all and we do need to get out of our comforts and face harsh realities it and it if we avoid it now it will end up in a great calamity and i use that word with very uh, care i mean serious care and we certainly are standing in the hinge period where so we do have unprecedented power to create a public narrative and uh, because of social media and you can use other methods as well but we do need to do that otherwise we'll be just on how we handle these times so these are the times which not only shape uh, the scientific community but will also test their metal and as dance famously said that there are darkest places in hell are reserved for those who maintain their neutrality in times of moral crisis we need do need to make a choice and we do need to make it as soon as possible thank you ladies and gentlemen i think i uh, finished my talk in time <laughs> we break for coffee now and we'll see you very soon do you want some discussion about the points you raised well we can skip we will be ending up uh, skipping coffee then i'll uh, we, uh, we can have discussion in coffee later sure. perfect